Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was acclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, the second chapter. He writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Word of God, word of life. Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also, also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Our Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew, the 27th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. The Lord be with you. You may be seated as this is a long gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to him, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests, the elders, persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. Govern the governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be upon us and upon our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after having flogged Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. Then they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. 
As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to be, wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits were also crucified with him, also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But others said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the curtain of those with him, now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear fellow believers, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we approach the Sunday of the Palm Sunday, the Sunday of Passion, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, vigil of Easter on Saturday, and ultimately resurrection morning, the story begins to rattle through our brains and our, into our collective memories. And those of you who've grown up in the church have undoubtedly heard this story countless times. I've only preached on it now about 38 times, 37, someplace in there. And every time I read this, I'm pulled up short. We were having a Bible study one year in northern Minnesota at my first call. One of the pastors in our conference had his Ph.D. in New Testament studies. And so he was going through this, and it was a delightful study. And we got to this one point. And here in the midst of this drama, especially in Matthew, it becomes crystal clear. As Jesus is standing silently before Pilate, who has the ultimate control over life and death for all Jews in that portion of the kingdom in that period of time, he says nothing. But the crowds around him have a lot to say. Wrap it up in two sentences. Crucify him, crucify him. They want him dead. Now, Pilate is not too consumed with the death of a Jewish man. And there is no legal reason for him to put him to death because, after all, he is, Jesus is, a citizen of Rome, and thus he is entitled to, to the process that Roman law would dictate. But he does have the power to put him to death to quell an insurrection. Maybe we should talk, stop and talk for a moment about Pilate's predicament. You see, it wasn't too long before this that Pilate was in a cushy job. He had the governorship of a very nice corner of the world. But an insurrection broke out, and Caesar had to send troops down there to quell it. And Pilate and his wife, who happened to be Caesar's cousin, were told, 
one more incident and you die with them. So Pilate had good reason to be weary and a little bit of reason to be wary as well. He was tired of the Jews. He was tired of where he was, but he was afraid. And so is his wife, and she sends word to him, have nothing to do with this man, this innocent man. And we hear that and we think, huh, somebody caught it. But you see, we forget the next, the next, tra- uh, the next portion of the stage, or the, the drama that unfolds. They ask, they're asked again, Who's, who do you want to have um, set free, Barabbas or Jesus? And they chose Barabbas. And then the unthinkable happens. Pilate puts them into a position where they make the first confession of who this Jesus is. He washes his hands of the whole deal with the phrase, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Now we're getting close to what's going to take place. There's going to be a spilling of blood. But in this time, Pilate does not want to be associated with that. See to it yourselves. And here it is. Here is the whole gospel that comes tumbling out before Easter that reminds us of what took place. His blood be upon us and our children. It is the first confession in Scripture of what Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is wrapping up to be. It is about the blood of the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the Son of Man who comes to save the world. This simple little phrase rolls off of the tongues of Jewish people into our ears, and we miss it. His blood be upon us and upon our children. What does that sound like? Pre-Exodus. For you see, in the moment they make that confession, they're confessing that it is the blood of Jesus upon them that thrusts them back in their corporate history all the way to the period of time where Pharaoh and the final plague has the death of the firstborn son, man and animal. As the angel of death passes by and kills him, except for the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and lintel offers protection for the firstborn son. Here is the last born son whose actions whose blood to be spilled saves the first the sons of the firstborn man and woman ish and isha who later become adam and eve it is the blood of the lamb of god that is going to save you and in this moment the Jewish people in their fervor to see Jesus put to death, whipped up by Pharisees and scribes and others, fail to catch what they just did. They confess that the death of Jesus Christ is what is going to save them. This phrase, his blood be upon us and our children, hearkens them, pushes them right back to that moment of exodus. And isn't it ironic that at the moment this trial is taking place, they're making preparations for what? The celebration of Passover, where they remind themselves of the pain and suffering they had as slaves in Egypt, set free by the blood of the Lamb that protects them and their children as they go out and come in with blood on the doorposts. And for countless generations, we zip past that. But if we stand in the courtyard with the multitude of people yelling, crucify him, and we hear the confession, his blood be upon us and upon our children, we cannot help but stop and think. Thanks be to God. For that's how our salvation comes. In that moment of pain and suffering, we make a lot of hay about all sorts of things. We make a lot of hay about the rejection of the Jewish people. We make a lot of hay about the denial of Peter. We we like those things because it makes the drama bold and big. But it's the small little voice 
that we skip over to our detriment. As you prepare to stand and look at an empty tomb, remember the words of confession accidentally made on the day before Jesus died. His blood be upon us and our children. That's the same blood that you take in your hand from the flesh that you hold in Holy Communion. You know, God's got to be up there smiling, going, I gotcha. I gotcha. Not that he tricked them, but that now he has his word in them, and they're his children. It's just a little work left to do, especially on people like you and me, the people of God. So, as we come to the conclusion of this text, we hear that Jesus breathes his last. And the first confession of who this man is was made by those Jews and codified by a centurion and those who worked with him. Truly, this man was God's son and whose blood sets us free. Amen. I would invite you to rise as we continue with our confession of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, you love and promise to hear the prayers of our hearts. With the humility of a servant, equip all congregations to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Lord, in your mercy. Save those who cry to you, God, in any need. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful, especially those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We offer to you the gifts and needs of youth, Bless them with your guiding grace as they face the challenges and opportunities in their lives. Touch their hearts with the gentleness of your love that they may know they are valued and valuable beings. Lord, in your mercy. For our bishops Elizabeth and Amy, may they faithfully shepherd your flock. Lord, in your mercy. We offer these prayers trusting that you love us and hear us. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, all, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the works of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Listen to God forever. Let us pray. Lord, we offer you these gifts of bread and wine, signs of your love for us. We offer you our own lives, that we may be servants and witnesses of your love to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. We ask you to nurture us, your precious children, through this blessed sacrament in lives of faith, hope, and love. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave th you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat of this, all of you. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, Father, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people that sins may be forgiven. Do this for the memory of me. In this bread and cup, we receive your promise of love, forgiveness, family, and eternal life. With joy we proclaim the mystery of faith. In humility and thankfulness, we lift to you, our loving God, this bread and cup. We also lift to you our own lives. May we reflect your love to one another. Lord, you have need of each of us. May we always willingly offer ourselves to you and to our neighbor. O God of resurrection and new life, we name before you those whose anniversary of death we remember this week. Charles Brown, Maxine Ferguson, Valerie Lupert, Gladys Worth, Ken Lurvey, and Bearden Seastrom. We rejoice in the new life they share with you and all the saints. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us now say the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for the kingdom, 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we have been together as your family at this table of love. May your gifts of love, forgiveness, and peace fill our hearts, our homes, our schools, and our communities. May we trust always in the promise that we are your children forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Loving God, bless our families and fill our homes with respect joy, laughter, and prayer. Especially send your blessing upon Tim and Carla Madsen, Michael and Bethany Marquise, Patricia McAllister, and their families. Protect them, guide them, and deepen their love for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive this word of blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod strengthen and uphold you today and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.